that kind of sanity checking is going to be good for you. All right. So just to sort of you know summarize this section, thinking about the player base and what, how it's constituted, right? Um, it's constituted in a way that is really composite. Right? Yeah, Eve has a very diverse player base, and it also has relatively low levels of trust. Remember, it's a mean game, a mean game with mean forums. And uh, players, what they seem to do, and what council members seem to be doing, is that they seem to be seeking a kind of algorithmic self-understanding to contextualize you know, what they understand as chaotic public discourse, right? as flawed democratic representation. I haven't brought up evidence for this in the talk today, but it will be in, my, in, in the paper that I'm going to write about how they see this process as flawed. And uh, trust in people and trust in analytics, they constitute each other, they contextualize each other, and yet they're also very ambivalent. So things like data friction you know, have been brought up by Paul Edwards and how, uh, about how scientists or data scientists themselves, you know, they have this sort of, they question each other about um, the usage of data, about the interpretation of data. And uh, Kate Crawford, who's also with this lab in New York, has talked about surveillance anxieties, about how users themselves are sort of really anxious about how their data is going to be interpreted in different ways. And we see a bit of this coming through in, uh, in the quotations that I've presented. Okay, so right now I want to sort of, you know, uh, wrap up or begin to wrap up by moving on to sort of discussion points. So these are sort of things that, um, that I, I, I don't really, you know, I'm still working my way through and I would really appreciate if you guys have, a, have any sort of uh, feedback, you know, if you want to help me close the feedback loop of this paper, right? Um, help me in thinking about how Eve manages this tension between network publics, so publics that, um, that are constituted through different uh, uh, user interactions and calculated publics, which are constituted through different kinds of algorithmic knowledge logics. Okay. And uh, another question that I'm trying to work through is one that John Banks has also asked about data-driven game development. How it, does it challenge the co-creative approach, right? Is that still a non-trivial contribution to game design, right? And uh, he also suggests that things like usage, how is the data used, right? The kinds of levels of transparency, those are important things in order to evaluate, in order to think about whether it can still be considered a kind of co-creative approach. Okay. So the final section that I want to take you guys through is also you know, a couple of discussion points. Right? And it's about thinking about how <coughs> players see control. How do they understand the influence that they have over the game design process, over the co-creation process? Right? And one of the things that I'm thinking about is that they feel like they need to interpolate themselves not as objects of consumer research, but more and more as subjects of consumer research. Okay. And uh, this is a quotation from a promotional video um, in which a council member is affirming, is warning the company that we are the product. Okay. So he says, only a really stupid company would not solicit customer feedback for its product. Right. And when you have a product that's largely made up by customers, right, he reminds people that people don't play E for their game mechanics or for their compelling PVE. Um, when in fact, I might preface that most Eve players are player versus environment kinds of players. Okay? They play it substantially because of the other players. We're not just the customer, but we're also the product. So yes, it's definitely vital. All right. So if players imagine control by processing their different kinds of uh, phenomenological feedback, their different kinds of traces uh, into forms that are legible and accountable for co-creation, um, what can we then think about these kinds of evidentiary claims, right? And how democratic evidence or democratic representativeness, managerial representativeness, scientific representativeness, how do they both compete and collude? All right, so I think I'm gonna quickly end with um, two discussion points in case you guys you know, don't have any questions, you know, these might be, these are things that are on my mind right now and that I would like to get your input on, right? The first thing is about, where, is there a possibility for any kind, or is it appropriate for a kind of normative critique, right? Uh, democracy, as I've tried to show, you know, is seen not in a rights-based discourse, but as a kind of instrument, as a kind of 
mechanism that draws selectively from, from this kinds of, um, of discourses, managerial discourses, political discourses, right? Uh, what can we say about this kind of process? And another question that I want to bring to the table is about that shift, right? When players shift both their identification and when developers shift their modes of address, right, from to customers as um, as objects of consumer research versus as subjects of consumer research. What kinds of opportunities as well as burdens for co-creation, you know, seem to bubble into the surface? All right. So that's it for me. <laughs> Exactly. We have about 15 minutes left for our discussion questions, and I'll, well, you know, I can go ahead and field the question as I come up. Yes, uh, Thanks. This is again getting to dig in such a rich spot. I was really surprised to hear that there was an upheaval in the middle of this period. You mentioned it kind of as a side, but it didn't seem like it was a big part of your question. Player upheaval about the microtransactions? Right, it was, um, it was during the periods uh, after 2010 to 2011. Is that a, it's, so it was after the period you were looking at? Uh, no, I'm looking at a, at a full, I'm looking at seven years and it's somewhere you know, at the beginning. So it was after that time that they started to, uh, to, to really do that contextualization work. Before that period, you know, either it was, um, it was not transparent or there was less of it in the council meetings, uh, the um, talk about analytics. Sorry, what was it? Whether or not they uh, they contextualized, whether or not the player, the council members were brought in to contextualize any kind of game analytics that they had. Did that people put them in a difficult situation or in a useful situation? It actually strengthened their um, their position as consultants, right? It enabled them to say that you know to uh, to point to more places where sanity checking was an important thing, right? And. Uh, that's a that's a really good point. I think I'll I'll leave that into the story about how you know that that was a that was part of something that happened that made them more important in a way. Do you think they like helped make themselves important, or they just happened to be useful? Like did they leverage that to say you need us because we can tell you we can help you, or was it more like they got turned to and they were there and that? I think, I mean, I can't, I can't tell if they leveraged it, but what I can say is that um, in the meeting minutes, there were many places in which I was like, oh my god, you know, they, there was forewarning of this, you know, and, I, and before I had read it, I was like, oh, okay, I thought it was an explosive thing, but in fact, they had been talking about this, you know, six months, eight months beforehand, they said, you know, if you want to do microtransactions, you know, you really have to consult the player base, or, you know, if you want to take the gameplay away from what players are used to, which is flying in space, to walking, you know, to having a more avatar-based gameplay, you really need to, you know, to, to think about it, and you really need to roll it out in a way that um, that will um, enhance the game instead of like dragging it down. And then after that, right, what I can say is that um, there was a uh, um, a promotional video that was made in which the players and developers sat down and had a Q and A, you know, back and forth. Uh, kind of, you know, and they, they had, that was the first time they started to talk about terms like accountability, right? Uh, if the play, if the player council is here, right, at this emergency summit, right, if we are here to write out different kinds of, um, of statements, joint statements to the player base, then now you have something to hold us accountable to as we move forward together. So that, you know, well, now that you mentioned it, that was, you know, that seemed like a reflection point in some way. But I'll never know, you know. I'll never know. Thanks. Super interesting work. I'm wondering if the, um, how the tension between, or if it arises, the tension between serving the community of players that already exists and bringing in new players and expanding the player base. Does that come up at all? It does, um, and that's a really interesting point. Uh, th these players are there to serve the old players, right? They have been elected by the old players. Probably the really heavy, heavy players. And once you spend a lot of hours doing it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So they mentioned that those are their constituents, and there is definitely they're like you know they sort of they bring it up, but there's no resolution to that. They're like, of course, you know, we we want to think about player recruitment, but really our task is towards player retention, uh, and uh, the the event that's. Sorry. 
the council. The council. Does the company sometimes put before them? At one point, the company put before them uh, player recruitment, which is the, the event that Halton brought up. Right? They were focusing on new avenues of gameplay and making the game more accessible through avatar-based uh, gameplay. Right? Uh, and instead, you know, there were lots of things in the backlog. There were lots of things that they said, Eve is broken. You, know, you need to fix it before you start you know, making new shiny things. Right? And, um, and because of that conflict, there was a refocus towards fixing things in the game for existing players, fixing things in the game, uh, fixing bugs, you know, revamping different areas, you know, rebalancing things for the uh, for the the veteran players. And in every since that period of time, and I can't really tell because the uh, the transparency has has increased. There are more meeting minutes now after that point, you know, as compared to before, so maybe they did talk about it but it just doesn't appear. But there is always a sort of you know veteran player agenda item and a new player experience agenda item since that point. That makes super interesting. That was a good case studies. Um, you may not actually have done this analytic work, so if you haven't, I'm just curious. Do you have a sense of the historical trajectory around how the folks are arguing and, and setting up their rhetorics of argument? Because I mean, 